Hello, Shannon Smith here, ready to make five cards with you that are all going to be made with stuff from your inspiration box. This inspiration box is darling. There are so many cute little details in the stamp set and then it does have the coordinating die set. So that just gives us that many more options. So I say that we just jump in and start playing. Okay, let's get started. So mine doesn't have the sticker that you have on your box because we got mine to me really quick so I could have the cards ready to go for your kit. But included inside um, are several things. We'll start out with the grass glaze. I'm just gonna open this up and show you what it looks like. It has um, little bits of, of grass inside grass bits. I'm not sure exactly what they're made out of, but you know what I'm talking about. Probably like the Easter grass that you see in, in your Easter basket, something like that. And we'll be using that on one of our cards today. Let's open this bag of goodies. We'll be utilizing some of everything in this kit. Okay. If you've been receiving the inspiration box for a while, you know, some of these things are, are, probably things that you would anticipate. Um, you've got your layering weight cardstock. You've got several colors of that. And then you've got always a piece of glitter stock, which is always a fun bonus. Okay, so you've got your five card bases. And if you'll fill it, it's such a nice weight of cardstock. It's 100 pound weight, and it just makes the best card base ever. Okay, you've got your pack of pattern paper that coordinates with the theme of the box. This one is called Bountiful Blooms, of course. And there are six patterns, two each. You can see all these beautiful butterflies. And then this is the one we'll be using. So you'll have plenty of paper for another day. So you've got your pre-printed card panels and conversation clippings, which are both printed with toner, so that makes them um, usable with your heat transfer foil. And you've got four different patterns of card panels. And then you've got your two different, uh, conversation clippings. You've got your black with white and your white with black. You can see there's a ton of, of sentiments there and there's two, each of those. So four panels total on that one. And then on the card panels, you've got two each of four patterns. And we will be using the third one I show, this one, and the first one. You've got your ribbon, you've got your sequins. There's five ounces of sequins in there. You'll never run out. Love that it has the different sizes in it. And I love the ribbon that comes in our kits. You've got one yard each of three different colors. And we'll be using the one on the bottom on a couple of the cards. And then here is the star of the show. We've got our stamps and our dies, our coordinating dies. And this is the Bountiful Bloom set. And look how cute it is. It has a ton of stamps in it. It's got 33 pieces. And then there's 30 coordinating dies. Makes your job so much easier. And we'll be utilizing those like crazy today. So let's jump in and make some cards. Okay, so your first card is going to be the wheelbarrow card. And hopefully you've got everything cut down. Um, all of the measurements are in your instructions. So go ahead and pull all of your supplies that you need for that. For the ink pad where it says to use a darker color than your yellow cardstock, I used the Simon Hurley Psych ink. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to score along the long sides of our yellow panel a half an inch in on both sides. So the way I do it, you can use your scoreboard if you want to. Um, I like to use my cutter. I just, I have a scoring blade in my cutter and it just makes it easier for me. 
And don't push too hard because it is layering cardstock. You don't want to rip through your paper. You just need to lightly score it. And we're not even going to fold it over. It's just to add a little bit of visual interest to your panel. And even though you see me going back and forth, I'm doing it very lightly. As I said, you don't want to go through and rip your paper. Just enough to get that little raised ridge or the indentation, whichever side you want to use. So now we're going to pull out that uh, stamp pad and just go along the edges with, this is Psyche. And I mostly just wanted to bring out just a little bit of definition on the edges and maybe even bring out the, um, just show the detail a little bit more of where we scored it. I started out kind of brushing it along the edge, but I think it's faster if you just set it down and set it on the mat and brush it along the mat. Just depends on what method you're most comfortable with. I like going in a circular motion so that I don't get any um, harsh marks. So this just makes it so we can see that, that little score line a little better. All right, so we can set that aside. So we're going to do step number two. We're going to center and adhere our yellow panel to our trimmed printed panel so that the sides that are inked are gonna be along the top and the bottom of the panel. You can use tissue tape, you can use easy tear tape. Um, I recommend a tape rather than a glue just to avoid warping. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap around, I'm, I'm just calling this ribbon color emerald. We're gonna, uh, it's the one that's on the bottom of the three and it's the more blue green, it's darker. And we're gonna wrap that around. We wanna save, conserve our ribbon a little bit because we're gonna use it on another card as well. So make sure that you're a little bit conservative about how much you're using, but don't be so skimpy you don't get a pretty bow. So we're just gonna tie a bow on that. You wanna make sure your ribbon is on the right side of your card because our wheelbarrow is gonna go on the left side. And because I was filming, I'm telling you what, I had more trouble tying this bow than I typically would, but it is nice when you're doing satin ribbon, it's nice if you can make your loops both the shiny side of the satin. And when I am doing uh, bows for cards and stuff like that, I do kind of the rabbit ear method because it does tie a prettier bow. And then just before you pull it tight, just go ahead and kind of arrange the tails. It's easier to do while the ribbon's a little bit loose, but you have to kind of keep the tension still on the, on the bottom part. And then just trim that up. Okay, so now we can adhere this whole panel onto our card base. So let's go ahead and get stamping. So we've got our, our perfect blend paper that we've got um, ready to accommodate all of our images. Our biggest one is going to be the wheelbarrow stamp. So we'll get that one on there first. And actually, if you're using a stamping platform, you can stamp them all at the same time. I find this is the easiest way to do it. So I've got the wheelbarrow. I'm going to want to grab the large and small six petal flowers. And if you're not quite sure, just go ahead and look at the card example on your instructions. And these are the ones, they don't have stems on them, the ones that I pulled. And then there's a smaller butterfly. There's a larger one and a smaller one, and you're gonna pick the smaller one. And when you're placing them, you're going to wanna make sure that you're leaving enough of a perimeter around them, both uh, whatever stamps are near each other, because you wanna make sure that you have room for the dies for each stamp as well. So you can cut them all out at the same time if you want to. As long as they're not too close together. Okay, so I'm just using Raven ink with this. And I'm gonna go over it a few times because I like a nice solid image. Okay, so now that we've got a nice crisp image, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to color. 
I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because I may be using something different than you are, but I am going to use the markers that are listed. I'm using the Spectrum Noir Triblend markers, which are available on the Brutus Monroe site. And the colors that I use are listed there. So, so go ahead and use whatever color choice that you had. And I'm just going to go through this very quickly because not everybody's going to want to use the same things. And you can kind of get a general idea by looking at the example picture and the instructions. Now that you've got your images colored, you can go ahead and die cut those. And you can see what I mean. You just want to make sure you have plenty of room around each image so that you have room for all your dies. And I just use um, repositionable tape when I'm using little, especially when I'm using the little dies. A lot of people use painter's tape, washi tape, whatever it is, it, it needs to be low tack. After all that coloring, the last thing you want is to rip your image. One of the best things about Brutus Monroe coordinating dies is that you can see on the card where all of the dies go. So you know if you're missing something. Okay, so now we have all of our die cuts ready to go and we can start assembling our card. Okay, so I'm going to use foam adhesive to apply my wheelbarrow to the card. And we're gonna put that on the left. We're gonna kind of tuck it in so it's a little bit behind the ribbon, but we don't want the bow to take over the card. We want it to not overwhelm the wheelbarrow. So make sure that you've got your bow tightened up and, and small enough and that you've got it not covering too much of your wheelbarrow when you place it on. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to put on is our butterfly is going to go in the upper left hand side above the wheelbarrow and I'm just using glue dots. When I'm using glue dots, I just put them all on the roll as I go just to keep track of them so I don't lose anything. So we'll put our little butterfly up above the wheelbarrow on the left. And then we just need to add our little flowers and we're gonna put those in the lower right hand corner. Now we just need to add our sentiment and you can see right where we need to put it. So I just put a little bit of easy tear tape on there and we'll just Add that to our yellow panel. I just lined the top of that sentiment up with the top of my yellow panel. And now the last thing we need to do is add just a few of our little sequins and we're going to use the little teeny tiny ones. They're so cute. The little tiny green ones. And I'm just going to have a little pile of sequins here throughout the video um, because we'll use several of these throughout, you know, there's sequins on almost every card. So you'll probably see a little pile sitting there for most of the video. So I'm using the Barely Art glue because I love the fine tip and because it dries a little bit quicker than some glues. So it just makes it easier for me. I also am using a detail grabber. If you have something like this, it does make it easier to pick up your little tiny sequins and place them. And there you have it. We have made our first card. Okay, so let's start card number two. This one we're going to do, I call it Grow Kindness. So we're going to use the printed panel that has the all over floral design. And hopefully you've got everything cut down and ready to go so that we can just jump right in. I also am going to use a, a bunch of different Simon Hurley inks. Use whatever inks you have in your collection but um, you can see on the instruction sheet what colors I used, but I will quickly go through them. I used Love Struck, Clear Skies, Shooting Star, Prom Queen, Roar, 
overzealous, viper, guppy, and crown me. And you're also, especially if you're using um, Simon Hurley inks or any kind of water reactive ink, you're going to want to use probably a little fine mist bottle with water in it. It just will make your ink blends smooth out a little bit and um, add kind of a fun effect. Is make sure when you are gathering your supplies that you grab an adhesive that has got a pretty strong tack to it so that it will stick to the glitter stock. Our easy tear tape is perfect for this. Okay, so we've got our blending tools. These ones are the Ranger Detail uh, ink daubers. The detail daubers are perfect for small details. And then I've just got various blending brushes. As you can see, the detail daubers are perfect for those little fine details. The best part of this is you can create your own ending. You can put your colors where you want them or you can kind of follow the picture to see how I did it. But there's lots of room for your own interpretation. The other nice thing is you don't need to be a coloring expert to do this method. This is a very loose, very just free coloring effort. You, there's going to be overlapping and that is just fine. That's the style of this, of this card. You don't need to worry if you get pink ink on the green leaf or anything like that. Just have fun. So just because, you know, take your time, have fun with it. I sped it up a little bit just because I, I wanted the video to be able to fit within an hour. Um, but I do think that you can see well enough to see, like I said, it's a very loose, very easy, fun method of coloring. And so there's really not a lot of instruction for it. Okay, so now I, I graduated onto the bigger one because I've got those bigger blossoms. And they do make a little bit softer of a blend. We're going to use that on the leaves a little bit too. So now I've got my mist bottle and you can see I'm holding it probably 10 inches away, maybe, maybe not quite that far. And I'm just letting the ink kind of, it, it's kind of smoothing out, but it also, um, and you can see I've got my paper towel. I'm just kind of daubing it a little bit. Um, it may make a little bit of a pattern just because it is water reactive, but mostly I felt like it just kind of softened the colors a little bit. Took out some of the harshness of maybe some of my blends that were less than, less than soft. And I barely misted it. It, this, it looks like I'm taking a bunch off, but it really is very, very lightly misted. It's not, you know, my cardstock is not really, really wet. And then at this point, you can get your heat tool and just kind of dry it off a little bit if you want to. So you can go to the next step. But it, it, as long as you haven't gotten it too wet, it, it shouldn't take very long anyway to dry. But if you're like me and you're impatient, then go ahead and take out your heat tool. Okay, so once that's dry, oh, and sometimes I'll stick something like, you know, a tape dispenser on top of something just to make sure it dries okay. So... Now that it's dry, we can center and adhere. Well, first, let's just go ahead and let it dry a little bit longer. Sorry. So while that's drying, we're going to just go ahead and put our glitter stock onto our card panel. So you want to just center that onto your card panel. 
sorry, I'm a little bit low on my camera. There we go. Looks like I fixed that. And so easy tear tape is perfect for this. Just get it on there centered really good. Uh, one little tip for you is if you are trying to center something on a panel, it always comes out better if you're standing up. You just get a better perspective and it's easier to put it on there straight. So then once you've got that on there, use your sticky adhesive to um, adhere your panel to your glitter stock. And this is where I say it's good to have something that's got a nice high tack to it. Like I think our easy tear tape is great for this. So in the written directions, it looks like I have you uh, putting the colored panel on the glitter stock first, but in the video, I put the glitter stock onto the card panel first. It doesn't really matter which one you do first. Both of them just need to be centered um, on top of the other, and you can either do it on top of the glitter stock one and then put both of those on your card panel, or you can put the glitter stock one down first and then center it on top of that whichever one you're more comfortable with. So then you're just gonna take your little strip of glitter stock and just go right through the center. Uh, you're going to want to adhere that using more of that sticky tape. And then I lined up the glitter stock strip so that it should go all the way to the end of your glitter stock panel. Now you can go ahead and stick your sentiment on and that goes on the right side if you're doing it like mine. And again, just using that tape, it just works great for lots of things. And so uh, step three on this, I haven't really been telling you the steps as we've gone, but I think you've probably figured that out. For step three, we're going to go ahead. We've already centered and adhered our panels. So we just need to add sequins to a few of the flower centers. And you can just pick the ones you like the best. You may not have cut your cardstock exactly the same as mine. Just pick the ones that you like the best. And I used some of the blue sequins and some of the pink ones. And again, I'm using the Barely Art glue for the sequins. They just, they stick on there really well with it and it dries pretty quickly. And again, the Detail Grabber is a great tool for getting them to stay on there. So hopefully you had fun making that card. It was just a nice, simple card that doesn't take too long. And you've got another card done. And now we're ready to move on to card number three. Okay, card number three. I call this one Take Time. All right, so gather up all your supplies. Hopefully everything's all cut out and ready to go. So the most important thing to remember on this one is when you cut down your patterned paper to make sure you save the strip that you cut off because you are going to do some paper piecing. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to stamp our sentiment. So we've got our circle and we are going to stamp our take time sentiment and we are kind of setting it. We're not centering it on the circle. We're adding it to the left hand side of the circle because our girl is going to go along the right hand side. So just kind of follow how I did it as far as just uh, setting it off to the left hand side a little bit. And we're just going to use Raven ink for that. I like to make sure that my image is nice and crisp, so I will go over it several times. We've got our perfect blend panel so that we can stamp our girl on that and we'll also stamp our flowers. Okay. 
Again, I'm using Raven ink. And the biggest points to look for here are to make sure you get her, her braid nice and dark. You're not really, her boots and her braid are the trickiest things. So you may want to go over it a few times just to make sure that you've got those nice and solid. And you can see it took me a couple of go-throughs to do it. And like I've said a million times before, I, I like a nice crisp image. So make sure your ink pad is juicy before you start. Okay, so I'm going to take that out and I'm going to, while I have the girl in place, I didn't do the flowers yet because I've got the girl kind of situated in the stamping platform. So I'm going to stamp her next. Now you're going to notice that it's not going to get any of the watering can. It's not going to get the full image and that's okay because we're paper piecing. We just need to make sure we get her head scarf and her clothing. And again, I'm using the Raven ink. It doesn't matter if you get the boots dark, it doesn't matter if you get the hair dark because we're going to cut the clothes away from that. So just make sure the clothes and the um, headscarf are really nice and crisp. Okay, so now we're just going to pick a little piece of pattern on our pattern paper for the watering can. Now I'm just gonna reposition my stamp just so that I can place it just where I want it to be to get the pattern where I want it. So you can see I was just trying to find just the right spot. I ended up cutting my paper down just so that I could get the piece of pattern that I wanted. You don't need to worry about the water or her hands or anything else. Just the handle, the whole watering can. If you get the whole watering can, you'll be okay. Okay, we're putting the white piece back in because we are going to go ahead and stamp out the flowers. And we wanna leave enough room again for dyes. The flowers we're going to stamp out three times. And it's the little tulips. Okay, so now we're just going to color her face and her hands. And I used the markers again, and you can see the colors that I used on the instructions included in your box. But again, I used the Spectrum Noir um, markers. And then I used a little bit of uh, Prismacolor pencil to add just a little bit of pink to her cheeks. I also used some marker to color the water and of course the flowers.
Okay, so we can go ahead and we can die cut those now. Okay, so now we're going to do some fussy cutting. And this method is really a fun way to add color, like I said, but it does take a little bit of time and patience. So when you're cutting out your watering can that we are starting with, one thing to keep in mind is where the hands are. You will cut the hand out, but leave the handle. So kind of watch the details around that area. So you can see I cut the, the hands right off and it's not going to matter because the pattern is still going to be on our base. So I can get right up in there and cut away the excess paper. Make sure that when you're cutting along the handle that you are careful because it is just a thin little line. Okay, so now I don't even need our boots. We'll just cut those off. The more precise you can be when you're paper piecing, the better. So just make sure you've still got some black so that you can line the black up with the base when you go to place it. For the paper pieced pieces, I went ahead and used the Barely Art glue to adhere them to the base image. And we can go ahead and we can adhere them to our card. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that emerald ribbon. I told you we would, that that would come up again. And I'm just going to go ahead and wrap that around the little craft card strip, cardstock strip. So see, I've still even got a piece for another day. And I just used my tissue tape along the whole length of the ribbon because I thought it was easier to get it to lay down flat. But you do want to make sure it's nice and taut so that you don't get wrinkles. And we're not going to tie it or anything, so we just needed enough that we could just wrap it around to the other side. And we'll just adhere the ends. So now you can go ahead and adhere the craft strip to your pattern paper. Now let's go ahead and add our sentiment. We're going to center that pretty much on the card. So it's going to be at the upper half of the card, maybe about a half an inch from the top of the pa printed panel, but centered. And now we can put our girl on the right hand side and we will use foam adhesive so that she pops up a little bit. And I went ahead and used foam on the flowers as well. So now you're ready to go ahead and adhere that onto your card base. And now you can just add your sequins. I like to put mine up around the sentiment. And we have finished card number three. Okay, card number four. 
So we're mostly going to use the cute little garden stamp at the bottom, the little flower patch. And we will use the die that coordinates with that. All right, so gather all of your supplies. And this one doesn't have too many. We've got the different colors of ink. We've got the blue, the purple, and the yellow ink, and a blender. You've got your raven ink and your dies and your stamps. And of course, the paper that you need. So for your blue and your yellow and your purple cardstock, you just need to be able to stamp the little flower patch stamp image and die cut it twice. And I've got my Clear Skies, Crown Me, and Over the Moon, Simon Hurley inks, and of course, Raven. And you are going to want an adhesive that has a fine tip. It will make it easier for you. And I recommend glue for this, liquid glue, for part of this card, at least. So we can start right off and adhere the blue card panel to our card base, just to get another piece out of our way while we're creating. And that one should just line up with your card base without a border. Now go ahead and take your piece of Perfect Blend paper and we're gonna do some ink blending on that. We'll start with our over the moon or whatever yellow that you are using and a blending brush. And we'll go about a third of the way up the card. We're just gonna do it in a section of thirds and it's going to be a landscape card. So we're gonna go across it horizontally. And truthfully, there's not a ton of the yellow that shows. There's a little bit and a little bit of the purple, but mostly what you're going to see is the blue ink blend. So now move on to your purple. And go another third of the way up. And I, was fairly light-handed on this one. Uh, Crown Me can be really dark if you want it to be, or really light, and I wanted to keep this one fairly light to kind of match the cardstock color. So now you can move on to your Clear Skies ink and finish out the panel. Because you see the blue a little bit more, you may wanna go over that one a little bit more than the other colors. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and adhere that to our card base on top of our blue panel. And again, just go ahead and center that. Okay, so now we're going to do some stamping. We're going to stamp this image twice on each of our cardstock papers. So you can see, I was just kind of measuring out. You can see I've, I've wasted more paper than you need to waste. You, you can conserve your paper more than I did. So I'm going to stamp these using Raven ink. And this is perfect if you've got a stamping platform because you've already got it in there. If you cut your cardstock right, you can just go ahead and leave it positioned the way that it is and not have to keep repositioning your stamp, which is why I say it's a great card for if you want to um, do kind of a bunch of cards at once. So now we can get our other two colors, our purple and our blue stamped the same way and then we'll die cut all of those. And while we're at it, let's uh, go ahead and stamp our sentiment. Now I kept the sentiment up towards the top of the circle. Again, it's not centered because we are going to have the flowers kind of coming up over the bottom a little bit. So go ahead and position it that way and use your Raven ink again. All 
Okay, so now we've got all of our die cut pieces. We're gonna start with our yellow and I'm just going to make a very thin line of glue along the bottom of the yellow. I'm just gonna do one at a time and I'm going to do one of each color at a time. So just uh, go ahead and line the yellow one up to the left hand side just along the bottom. Remember that there's just adhesive there so that you can still put things behind it. So we'll set the other yellow one aside and we'll move on to purple. And you'll see why you want to situate it that way in just a minute. So now if you look at the tulip on the left hand side where the leaf is, that's kind of going to be our guide for where we're going to have that sneak out and how far up to put our little garden row. So now we can push that one down. And again, it just has that thin little layer of glue along the bottom. So we have room behind it. And we're gonna do exactly the same thing with the blue. Lining it up from that leaf again. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our sentiment and kind of get that situated so we know where we want that to line up. Our goal is to have the sentiment centered in between the two taller plants. So there will be some overlapping in the center, which is just fine. I overlapped over the top, but I lined it up so it's so that the leaf goes to the end of the pan, the card panel. But our sentiment is centered in there now, and we can go ahead and adhere that to the card base. We want the flowers to be in front of it. Now we can just add our other two rows. Now we're just going to take our little blue strip that we have left and we're going to adhere that to the very bottom, just covering up the base of the yellow flowers. That way it just kind of anchors them down a little bit. Now we can add our sequins. All right, and we have card number four completed. Okay, card number five. I like to call this one Seeds of Hope. So you've got your supplies all gathered up. You want to make sure that you have some type of a blue ink and that you have your uh, white ink as well. The alabaster pigment ink is perfect for this. And I just used my Perfect Blend paper. You don't need very big pieces, so this is great for a scrap. I used the one that I used on card number three. And then you need your sentiment circle. And of course your sentiment. 
Okay, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to ink blend your circle using some type of a blue ink. I'm using Clear Skies from Simon Hurley. I'm just using a nice round motion to keep it from getting harsh marks. And mostly you want to concentrate on the, the top portion because the bottom is going to have some of the grass glaze on it. But I did the whole thing because sometimes, you know, if you have a little spot that's a little more sparse with your glaze, that'll just kind of keep it all, um, you won't have any weird white spots. You're also going to want to stamp with the blue ink a little bit later. So I kept mine light enough that you could still see um, a little bit of detail that we'll add. Okay, now that we have our circle all ink blended, we can go ahead and put some grass glaze on this. So you're going to want to get your spatula or whatever it is that you're going to use to apply it. Spatula is probably your easiest thing to use. And I found that when I was applying it, it was easier rather than try to spread it. I spread it initially, but then I just kind of pat it as I went along because that gave it a nice amount of texture. It kind of kept the grass on there anyway, but also I just liked that it just made it look more like grass. Now this does take quite a while to dry. I got impatient, so I ended up using my heat tool to finish drying mine. Um, naturally, I think it would take a couple of hours depending on how thick you apply your glaze. I put on a pretty thick layer myself, but it does dry nicely. I figured I let it dry for about an hour and a half, I think before I went ahead with my heat tool. So a lot of it was already dry and that way, um, I didn't get a whole lot of curling or anything on my paper. I would suggest letting it dry for about an hour. And then after that, you're probably okay to use your heat tool to finish it off. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. 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 I think we got that covered. Okay. So set that aside. And while that's drying, you can be doing something else. And I went along the edge and just kind of cleaned that up so that I would still have a clear, clean edge. That's a preference thing. Okay. So we'll go ahead and get our Okay, so go ahead and adhere your brown cardstock to your card base. And now take your craft cardstock and put it in your stamp mat, or if you're using a block, you could probably do a couple of stamps at a time, but it, if you do have a stamp platform, this step will be much easier for you. Go ahead and arrange a bunch of the different stamps. There's a variety of them you can use so that you are making something of your own pattern paper. Now I went ahead and put a little bit because I'm doing the whole panel at one time, I went ahead and put a little piece of tissue tape on the back of my card panel so that it would stick to my misty. It also made it easier for me to be able to put stamps all the way around. So I'm using the, all the smaller stamps. I didn't use the, the great big stamps like the girl or the wheelbarrow or the little garden, but I went ahead and used a bunch of the other little image stamps to create my pattern. And I think it's great if, if they kind of come off of the panel a little bit, they, it looks more natural. It looks more like pattern paper than if every single stamped image is all included. All, um, rather than having the entire image on the panel, it just looks more natural to have it coming off a little bit. Play with them till you have an arrangement that you like. And keep in mind, 
Honestly, I didn't need to do the entire panel because there's a portion of it that's going to be covered by that great big circle, but do what feels good to you. I also liked to, I placed a lot of the big stamps first and then put little fillers in between and put some of the little stamps like the bee or the ladybug in between. So you can see I used a lot of stamps. You may not even need to use that many. This is just how I did it. So now I'm ready to ink up all my stamps and I'm going to use the pigment ink, the alabaster. I'm not going to emboss it or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and just use the ink. And I am sure I went over this a couple of times. so that I could get a crisp image. Okay, so now we've got our little scraps and I've already arranged the stamps so that they just kind of fit where there's room on my scrap to do the various little stamps like the hat and the bee, the seeds, the little spade, and the ladybug. So again, I'm using the tri-blend markers. Use whatever you have in your own stash. So when you're coloring, I just put a little bit of a, of a texture in my seeds bag just by coloring lines back and forth until it was all filled in. Do what makes you happy, but I just thought it would be fun to kind of make it look like burlap. Go ahead and die cut your colored images. Okay, so now you want to get your nice dry circle. You want to make sure that the grass is dry. I dried it both on the front and the back just because drying it from the back, I figured a lot of the moisture would come out that way as well. So now that it's dry, we can add the rest of our images. I'm going to add the images using foam squares or dots. And I'm going to start with the seed bag. Nope, I'm going to start with the B. <laughs> now I'm going to stamp a little bit of detail around our B. I'm just using one of the little detail stamps that has the dots and the heart. And I'm just using the same color that we inked in because we just wanted to give a little bit of added interest, a little bit of texture to our background. So I'm using the clear skies again, and I'm going to stamp that three different times just around our B a little bit. So we've got it stamped twice on one side and one on the other. I always like to do an odd number on one side and an even number on the other. And you can see it just adds just a little bit of detail. All right, so now that we've got our little details on there, we are ready to add the rest of our images. So using form squares, I'm going to add the seed packet first. And I'm just going to put it right on the grass up towards the top. And then we're going to take our little hat and we're going to have it as if it's just kind of resting on the top. Now we can add our little spade and our ladybug. Okay, so now add your craft card panel. And you're going to want to put your brown strip on next. And you're going to go up about maybe an inch from the bottom. Oh, 
Okay, so now we're going to just add tissue tape to the back of our circle. And then I put that on the left-hand side, maybe a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the paper and a little bit more than that from the top and bottom, just kind of centered along that. The grass is kind of lining up with the brown line, which worked out pretty good. It's okay if yours doesn't. Now we can add our little sentiment using our tissue tape. And we're going to place this so that it's halfway on the circle a little bit, maybe not quite halfway, and then partially off of the circle. And now all we need is our finishing touch. Let's add a few of our little sequins. And there you have it. We've completed card number five. Let's just put all of our cards out here and look at how many cards you got just out of that one kit. And you still have supplies that you could, you could make several more. But hopefully this inspired you and made you think of some ideas for cards that you want to create. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. I would be happy to get back to you on that. Well, hopefully you learned something new or tried something fun that maybe you've done before but haven't done in a while. And hopefully it's giving you new ideas for how to use your inspiration box. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll, I'll see you next month. Bye-bye.